Okay, so in this uh, <coughs> demo, I'm just going to start by showing a simple modeling process. We're going to make ourselves a sort of rocket using um, exercise mod tool. So I'm going to start by selecting the top right view here, press F12 to make it full screen, and then I'm going to select the user view, which gives us the correct aspect ratio and just fills the view as opposed to looking down the camera object. Okay, so that's our starting point, and to twiddle this view is already a little bit uh, unusual, so hold down the S key, gives you the twiddle mode, and if you hold it down as opposed to clicking it, while you're holding it down you use the right mouse button to orbit, uh, the left mouse button to pan, and you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And when you let go of the S key, having done your twiddling, it'll snap back to whatever tool you were in before, which is quite nice. Um, okay, so I'm going to start now by creating a primitive. So we're going to create a polygon mesh cylinder. Virtually all the objects that uh, I create are just meshes, really, to start with. Polygon mesh is the main primitive type for gaming. Uh, and I'm going to just uh, elongate this. It's going to be the basis of our missile. And I'm going to end up rounding the nose cone of this. So I'm going to break already these into a few more polygons to give us a bit of leeway there. And also I'm going to separate this into more polygons in along its length with this slider here so that we can have some room to play with putting wings and things like that on. Um, we don't need to be too precise about this because we can split and uh, rejoin uh, edges later on, so it's not a big deal, but we're just going to start with something roughly correct. Okay, so let's start by putting the nose cone on here, and I'm going to shade the view so we can see it more clearly. Uh, and as you can see, when it's shaded here, if it's selected, it has the um, wireframe also shown over the top. And to deselect it, I just draw a little box away from it there, and we can see it deselected. The other thing uh, I'm going to do is make sure that I've got the headlight switched on, which is off this mode here. And that just also always means that we have um, some light from the viewing direction onto the objects. Later on, I might, uh, when I start to add lights in a later tutorial, we'll switch that off. So we're underway now, so let's crack on. The, the key to XI is all about the shortcuts. So, and the shortcut keys are basically they they seem to be grouped by layout on the keyboard rather than because the letters mean anything. So the first one we're going to tinker with is T, which allows us to select individual points here. So you can see that on my shape I've got the vertices, if you like, uh, defining the edges of these polygon quads. Uh, I can also select individual faces by pressing the U key. So that's U. And the I key allows me to select individual edges. But in this case, I'm going to choose T, press the center point here. And what I want to do is raise this whole lot up. Uh, if I press V now, I get the uh, movement options. Okay, But what I want to do is raise this up with a little curve. So I'm going to do something slightly different, which is to go to Component, Proportional. Okay, And you can see, if I zoom in, if I press F, it frames where we're working here. Uh, you can see that some of these have become bright red, medium red, dark red, blue. So that's showing me the zone of influence now as I pull this up. Okay, But uh, that needs to be a little bit broader. So I'm going to go Component, Proportional Setup. And now as I come over here, we can actually adjust the uh, distance. So you see the red of my node starting to reflect this increased distance of, uh, of operation. So let's, let's crank it up quite a bit. Oops. Not that much, because we're picking up all of them. Let's go down to about um, two, something like that. You can see, as I start to pull this off, I'm getting a nice curve now. In the, uh, if, I, if I also make the fall off slightly sharper as well, 75, not 37, uh, we should see this start to form a nice dome shape, much more like a missile. Okay. So that's using the proportional, and th that basically has effects, uh, as you might imagine, on, um, on most of the primitive types. So you can manipulate them as a, as a set based on this proportion, proportional distance. Okay, and I'm going to switch that off now, because we're done. That's the top of my nose cone. Okay, now let's come back in here, and I'm going to put some uh, sort of wings I, uh, or tail fins on here. So I'm going to press the T key again and just select all the nodes, box select all the nodes around that base there. And with that V button and just picking the, the arrow uh, up in Y there, I can just, just bodge those down a wee bit. And then the U key to select one face. And then what I'm doing is I'm holding the, oops, uh, I'm going to uh, 
Select the one face, then I'm going to press S to twiddle around the objects. Press the Shift key, to select the next one, twiddle around a bit more. Shift key, select the next one. So the Shift key has allowed me to select, as it's fairly standard in Windows, uh, multiple objects. So I've selected those, and I'm going to do another top shortcut key, which is Control D. And nothing apparently happened there, but what I've done is I've duplicated these faces. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I want to move them all out um, radially out from the base of this. And I'm going to use the scale to do that. And it's a sort of really common transformation. And down here under transform, I can set this to be a global scaling of all of these shapes. And you'll see as I start to scale them out here, they're all coming out in a sort of slightly wild way. But if I locally transform them as well and scale this back, you can see that what I've really been able to do here is bring them, bring them all out and then uh, bring them right back as a sort of tail fin. And we can even add an even more interesting shape to them if I just V those as well to bodge them up just a little bit so they've got this slightly asymmetric feel about them. So that's looking pretty good already. So if we just turn this, uh, G turns the grid off, we can have a quick look at our object. Okay, and it's looking pretty good. You can see everything is being smoothed here by default. So w one of the things we will come back and do later on is we'll sharpen up these edges, but for the time being we're just going to leave those because I'll do the edge sharpening at the end. Bring the grid back on just to help me orientate myself. Now, so what I'm going to do now is, is make a little engine. So similar process this time. I'm going to use the scale again, but I've selected all of the nodes again there using the T key. Uh, and then X to scale them in. And we're going to do them globally, which is going to be a bit odd here, but it'll actually scale those in. Bottom them down a bit. And scale them in. The reason they're scaling in up at the top there because I'm using the global position up here. I can move this um, thing around as well, but I'll keep it simple. So we'll just keep doing this. Scale it in. Okay, so that's made an engine shape pretty trivially as well. And uh, now I can sort of start to think about the proportions of this a little bit more. So I'm going to select the, all those top nodes and just uh, elongate that a wee bit more. Uh, to start getting the proportions of this right. And similarly, I think the engine's still a bit too along there. Let's just drop that oops. Drop that back in. Okay, so that's looking pretty good already. Uh, the final thing I want to do uh, just later on when I come to texture so add a little bit of interest to the shape is just pick one of these panels. Might as well pick this one. So you to pick that panel there. And then I'm going to use a really uh, cool uh, XSI feature which is um, first I'm going to duplicate that edge. So control G to duplicate that face, sorry. And then I'm going to go to Modify, Poly Mesh, and there's loads of cool stuff down here, but the one I want to use in this case is Bevel Components, which is really handy. And that basically creates, uh, as the name suggests, a bevel, and you can adjust the bevel properties here, which is really nice. And when we've done that, we'll find that they are now all faces in their own right. Okay, but if I come back here, take V, make sure it's local to the face that I'm working on and push that back, you can see I get a nice little recess panel which we're going to drop a different texture on uh, later on in the demo. Okay, so that uh, is the basics of our first model uh, and in the second part we'll start texturing it.